Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, actually, I want to follow up on that line of questioning a little bit more. Um, I think you said that when people violate the rules in a significant way, they have one decision left to make, which is aisle or window, right? Meaning they're on. Because they're fired. They're, they're, they're on they're their out way out. They have, one, they have one decision, and that's whether to sit on the aisle or sit by the window. Um, and then the other consequence that, that Mr. Hode spoke to was the financial penalty that they would experience. But it just seems like a few thousand dollars, particularly against a pretty lucrative um, contract that they would have had. And it strikes me that that's, um, <clears throat> If that's the only deterrent that's at work in terms of people um, performing at a high level, that's not much. In other words, you can say, well, let me get in here, let me make, let me make uh, a, a good living here for a moment, and if I screw up, and if I screw up in a, in a terrible way, as, as this one incident illustrates, then the worst that's going to happen to me is I'm going to have to choose between an aisle seat or a window seat and maybe give up a bonus and my last paycheck. Um, I mean, that's essentially the consequence that they face. Isn't that right? I would also add that we uh, endeavor to get their security clearance pulled, canceled, and once that's done, they'll never work in a clearance capacity for the U.S. government again, or okay. it's very, very unlikely. Okay. But you'd agree that it's not, it doesn't have the same kind of deterrent effect that uh, it would have if they thought that they were um, going to be subject to uh, prosecution, if there was a clear set of, of rules in place, a clear context in which they could be prosecuted, they could face something akin to a court-martial, or all the other kinds of measures that can, that can occur if you are in a traditional military setting. You'd agree that that provides Mr. an Chairman, extra level of deterrence. Mr. Chairman, I, I think the witness has already testified that he he did everything that his I'm company sorry, uh, could to this person, I'm sorry, and that not, he is not, not uh, the prosecutor. You're not acting according well. To I'm the rules. actually I'm headed in this the direction. Not, this is not a court case. Uh, the gentleman has time, and I'm going to restore his um, time. Where I'd ask like whatever to, he wants and to say whatever he wants. Some people in this committee have said it completely outlandish things, and uh, nothing we can do about it. They they have their right, including you. You read a whole blasphemous statement about Democrats, but no one objected to that. So a uh, gentleman is going to be recognized for In any event, would you agree that that would provide some extra deterrent, some extra reason for people to exercise their, their conduct in a careful way? We welcome that level of accountability. Most of our people have already served in the U.S. military or they served in a law enforcement capacity. They're used to that kind of uh, 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 accountability and um, and transparency into what they're doing. Well, I appreciate your saying that because I um, we're not there. To, we're not hiding anything. Yeah, I I would like to leave aside the, the question of whether you should be Blackwater should be in this space that you're in. I don't know enough about the history of whether providing the sort of protective services that you do is something that isn't done by the military traditionally or is, so I'm going to leave that aside. I'm also leaving aside the issue of, of the cost, which strikes me as exorbitant in terms of what the taxpayers um, um, are paying here. Uh, you keep calling for, I think, an activity-based cost analysis or assessment, which um, I think we'd be happy to get more information. Uh, about I got to believe there's a there's a less expensive way even to hire private contractors uh, like yourself, and so I'm really left with the accountability issue as the one that strikes me as as front and center here, and as I've listened to your testimony, in particular, you're saying with respect to this this uh, one person who uh, was drunk and and committed this this uh, this uh, homicide. Uh, I'll characterize it that way. Um, I think you said you'd be happy to see that person prosecuted, something akin to that. And I'd like to enlist you as an advocate to strengthen whatever the rules and uh, rules of engagement are, whatever the statutes are that are out there. Mr. Braley took us through these various things, and you indicated that you weren't sure whether each of those necessarily reached as far as they could in, in providing that kind of uh, uh, penalty 
uh, environment, and I'd like I'd like you to speak to whether it would be a good thing to make sure that it does. I believe Congressman Price from North Carolina has been uh, pushing to amend some of that language, and uh, and we support that fully. Thank you. The gentleman yields back his time. Um, 